Laura, we, we got to know each other through your involvement with the Manchester M Optom uh, training program. Um, it's an unusual or different way of becoming qualified as an optometrist. Perhaps you could tell us a little bit about that. So the M Optom is a four year undergraduate program offered to four students by the University of Manchester. And at the end of it, you graduate with a master's in optometry, but also becoming qualified as an optometrist. So you don't have to do the usual pre-registration year post-graduation. Um, one of the great things about it is that you get to spend 12 months in practice. So I got to spend six months at BBR Optometry followed by six months at a hospital setting afterwards. Now, the, the practice has a, a, a very interesting uh, element of, uh, of optical correction and you were actually our first person to, uh, to take part in that. When you were a, when you were a placement student here, and you've you've gone on to continue wearing contact lenses in that mode, and you 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 you're actually our number one um, contact lens fitter for overnight vision correction. Perhaps you can tell people a little bit about overnight vision correction. What does it involve? So overnight vision correction or orthokeratology is when you wear a contact lens overnight, and then that means that you can be spectacle or contact lens free throughout the day which is great for patients with certain professions or if they do things like sports. Um, it's also great in reducing down the progression of short-sightedness or myopia. Um, so it's great for children and we do fit a lot of children at the practice, especially those who are starting out wearing glasses or who have seen an increase in the prescription recently or with certain risk factors such as both parents being short-sighted. Uh, are there risks as well as benefits in, in overnight vision correction? Yes, yeah, so the lenses, you have to clean them very intensely because you wear the same lens for six months. Um, so the cleaning and the hygiene has to be to a high standard. And do you sometimes find that children are a bit better looking after their lenses than adults and keeping them clean and being compliant with instructions? Yes, <laughs> usually. <laughs> okay, that's often the case. So are the particular people that orthokeratology or overnight vision correction wouldn't be suitable for the particular people that, uh, that you could tell us about? So at the moment it's only suitable for people who are short-sighted and um, within a range of prescriptions. Um, also some people who might have irregular sleep patterns because you do have to wear the lenses every night. So for example people who might do shift work. Um, also, if you have certain eye diseases, especially affecting the front of the eye, so especially affecting things like the cornea, but the you know, optometrist can always advise you which one, whether you are suitable for the overnight lenses. Now, one of the other elements that's enhancing your clinical skills is becoming qualified in independent prescribing. Um, so uh, perhaps you can give us a little bit of a brief on, on, on what that's going to do and, and, and how you go about uh, becoming qualified. So to um, train to be an independent prescriber, I'm spending 12 months doing theory with the University of well, Aston University. And then I go on to a placement at the hospital where I'm working alongside ophthalmologists. But also we've got independent prescribers like yourself in the practice that we can work alongside and get the advice and experience from that as well. And the, the new refit has given us a, a, an additional, um, an additional uh, uh, capability of offering um, a new consulting room suite for specifically for in, emergency patients. Do you think your independent prescribing will be beneficial from that point of view? So with the ability to prescribe independently, it would stop the patient having to go to A&E or have to wait for by the GP to prescribe eye drops so we can prescribe that in practice and it's a lot easier for the patient and it avoids the waits as well but also reduces the burden on the hospital. And and finally I think uh, I think you've got a little bit of news to share with uh, to share with the audience haven't you? Congratulations Laura and thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>